Every year, around 23,000 high school students apply to study medicine in the UK. Of those, a large proportion will sit the BMAT exam to try and put themselves in the best position for medical schools to pick them and to help them realize their dreams of becoming a doctor. So, what is the BMAT exam and how do you do well in it? So if you've clicked this video, then I'm assuming that you're planning to apply for medicine this year or you might be thinking about applying in the future. Either way, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alfie and if you guys are new here, I'm a fourth year med student and I like to make videos about how I'm hopefully going to become a doctor. Today, I wanted to share my tips and tricks for doing well in the BMAT and have partnered up with Kaplan who have very kindly sponsored today's video and also have some great resources for the BMAT. Right now, if you're looking for any workshops on specific sections of the BMAT, um, whether that be physics for section two or the essay for section three, then do check out the links in my description box for more information. They're currently running these workshops live online for two hours led by top scoring teachers. And alongside these workshops, they also have an online question bank with over 600 questions, which also comes with an essay review service for up to two essays, which is pretty unique and helpful. The great thing about these questions are that they're always up to date, including the recent changes to section one changing from aptitude skills to thinking skills. If you want to get some more tips about the application process, they're running a free seminar on Friday the 26th of June, where they'll be talking about everything you need to know to get into medical school. So do check that out because I think it'll be incredibly useful to have an idea of what's to come. If you want to check it out, then the link for that is also in my description box as well. Before we jump into it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. To kick things off, let's talk about what the BMAT is. So the BMAT stands for the Biomedical Admissions Test and it is made out of three sections. One section which is dedicated to problem solving, critical thinking and data analysis. Another section which is dedicated to testing your scientific knowledge and a third section which tests your writing. So, as you probably already know, applying to medicine in the UK is quite competitive. So the BMAT is used as a tool by some universities to help make that decision easier. So in the UK, the universities that do look at the BMAT include Brighton and Sussex Medical School, University of Cambridge, Imperial College London, Keele University, Leeds School of Medicine, Lancaster University, University of Oxford, and University College of London, which is where I'm attending right now. So here are some important dates that you need to be aware of. Just as a heads up, the test date that was scheduled for September has now been cancelled because of COVID. But also make sure that you do check out the website to see if any of these dates do get updated as well. The BMAT exam is definitely something which I think some schools might struggle to give the best advice for. And I think a big reason for that is because there are certain misconceptions that students have. And some of these include... Oh, it's really hard. I didn't do physics for GCSE. I didn't do physics for GCSE or A-levels. I don't do an essay based on your A-levels. I don't really know how to write an essay anymore. But the truth is, if you decided to apply for medicine, then you've likely already registered for the UCAT, which in my eyes is actually probably a harder test. So the BMAT is definitely within your reach as well. To help give some context to my advice, I want to quickly touch on my experience doing the BMAT all the way back in 2014, which is about six years ago, and that makes me feel really old. So I had my BMAT exam scheduled in the first or second week of November. I had already submitted my UCAS application with all the fun stuff, including my personal statement and my references from my teachers. And I had just finished the UK CAT, now known as the UCAT. So the only thing left for me to do was the BMAT. And I remember during that time being super stressed out because everything just seemed so jam packed. It was like, as soon as you were done with one thing, then there was something else for you to do. Whether that be finishing off your personal statement or trying to improve your predicted grades. It just felt like the workload never stopped. And this is a pretty big difference from all my friends who were submitting their UCAS applications a month later um, because they were applying for subjects that weren't medicine. So when the BMAT released their test date that year, I realized pretty quickly that it clashed with the week that my school schedules their camp. We called it something like Quest Week, and essentially it was a time where we could go to different places around the world to try and see new things and see new cultures. There was a trip which seniors always raved about, which was to this charity house in Kathmandu, Nepal. Unfortunately, I had to drop out of that trip even after paying a deposit for it. And so did all my other friends who were taking the BMAT as well. Looking back at it, I was pretty sad that I couldn't go for the trip, but I remember it motivating me at that time because I thought if I was gonna miss out on something like this, then this better impact my future in a good way, which being at med school now, I can definitely say it did. 
So going into the revision period, I started off by making a schedule which covered all the topics and questions which I wanted to cover during that period of time. Now that brings me on to the next topic which is the resources which I used. So. So, to talk about the resources which I use, I want to start off by talking about the books which I ordered. The first book that I ordered was the IC Medical 700 Question BMAP book. And this is actually the same publisher as the book that most people use for the UK CAT. I'd say that the UK CAT book was more representative of what the actual exam was like, but nonetheless this was still a really useful book because it kind of gave you a good idea of all the different question types and also a good idea of the pacing that you had to maintain for the exam. And the second book which I bought was called Preparing for the BMAT, the official guide to the biomedical admissions test. So sadly, I don't have these books with me right now because I think I've left them back in Hong Kong. But this book was nowhere near as thick as the last book which I mentioned, the 700 question book from IC Medical. Uh, but this book was still really useful because it had really good explanations for different sections. Moving on to the best bank for your public resource, because it's actually free. The BMAT has put a guide on its website for section 2 which has all the scientific knowledge which you need to know. So they have a syllabus and they have detailed notes for each topic. I would say use this guide as a home base to help build a good foundation for your scientific knowledge. Moving on to my main revision tool, which was past papers. If you go on the BMAT website again, you'll find that they actually put the exam papers dating back all the way to 2003 till the most recent year. So there's a bunch of questions for you guys to do. And for a certain select few papers, they do give some detailed explanations for those as well. I remember when I was doing the exam, printing out all the papers that existed at that point in time and organizing them into these binders and having these two massive binders and saying to myself, before I sit this exam, I have to finish all of these. So I definitely wish it was an online question bank for the BMAT back when I did it because I remember when I was practicing for the UK CAT, there were questions online and they were easy to access, but there was nothing for the BMAT. And that's because the biggest tip I can give you for the BMAT is to practice, practice, practice. Familiarizing yourself with a bunch of questions not only exposes you to things that you don't know so that you can learn them, but it also improves your confidence so that when you do sit the exam, you can really get the score that you deserve. Let's move on to individual sections. So section one is called thinking skills and it involves 32 questions which needs to be done in 60 minutes. And so that's roughly under two minutes for each question. This section is designed to test your skills in problem solving, critical thinking, and data analysis. The great thing about this section though is you don't have to learn any new content. Questions are typically structured where they have a bit of text and then they'll have at the end a question which asks things like, what is the conclusion of this? So what is the main assumption? Or what is the flaw of this argument? For data analysis, they'll be having you look at things like graphs or tables and then you have to make an inference off of this. So my tips for this section are to practice reading quickly. Whilst you might think that two minutes per question is a lot of time, you don't want to be spending all this time just reading the question. You want to be able to spend your time trying to figure out what the answer is. And my next tip for this section is to recognize the different question types that do appear. So for example, when you're doing practice questions and you realize, oh, they like to ask questions on percentages, make note of it. Because what that does is it kind of builds up a library of question types and it means that you're going to be that much more familiar when you actually come to sit the exam. So my last tip for you is something which I've already mentioned a few times in this video, which is to practice. So with section one, they're not asking you to learn any new content. So if you want to get a good score for section one, then you really need to expose yourself to different question types. Now, moving on to section two, which is scientific knowledge. In this section, they'll be testing your knowledge on biology, chemistry, physics, and math. Section two is the section which I feel like most people feel the most comfortable about because it's based on science, and so therefore they feel like this is something that they can prepare for. So there's usually confusion over the difficulty for section two. I can guarantee you that the content for section two will be up to a GCSE level. However, the trick here is that the application of this knowledge is definitely harder than GCSE. My tips for section two are familiarizing yourself with the guide that they have on the website to make sure that your foundation is strong. There's definitely gonna be subjects in biology and chemistry if you're doing that for A-level. So when it comes to the exam, you'll be fine for those topics. So make sure you identify which topics you're weak on and start working on those as soon as you can. So once you've done that, the next big hurdle is timing. So for section two, there are 27 questions which you have to do in 30 minutes. So that's just a little over a minute for each question, which really isn't a lot of time. So the biggest tip I can give you for this section is to practice under exam conditions. I know how easy it is when you're advising on your own to just kind of do things at your own pace. 
but it's so important for you to do things under exam conditions because what it means is that when you finally do come to the exam, you'll be that much more comfortable with the pace of the exam and you won't get flustered when time's running out. Finally, moving on to the last section, section three, writing. I think most people dread this section because they feel like they haven't written a proper essay in a long time. I definitely want to make a dedicated video about writing because I think there's an approach to writing at any level, whether you're in high school or applying for university or at university as well. So my first tip for section three is breaking down your 30 minutes, which you have for this section into a time for planning and a time for actually writing. For section three, you're given this one A4 sheet and then that's it. So you can't just go back and you know cancel out the things you're writing and then ask for more paper. That piece of paper is the only thing you're getting. So that just forces you to write something concise and to the point. But that also means that you don't have to worry about writing loads and loads and loads. That's why it's so important for you to dedicate a good amount of time to planning out your essay. I would say a good ratio is about five to 10 minutes for planning because then that leaves you about 20 to 25 minutes for actually writing. And don't forget to leave some time at the end to proofread what you wrote. So something which I think also is quite useful is instead of thinking, oh my God, I have to write a whole essay, just think of it as I have to write three or four small paragraphs because realistically, that's how much space there is. When I started preparing for section three, the way I approached it first was I found a few different questions and I tried doing a few of them under time conditions. And once I kind of got used to the pacing of that, then I would try and focus my time more so on making essay plans. The reason for that is because when you're preparing for the BMAT, you don't have all the time in the world. So in order to be efficient, once you're comfortable with the pacing for the exam, then I would say focus on essay plans for section three. That way you can cover a bunch of different questions and get comfortable with different question types. For section three, there are four choices that you have uh, and you just have to pick one. So there are usually two questions which are kind of general and a bit philosophical. And then there's usually a medicine related question. And then there's also an animal related question for veterinary students who are applying to vet school with the BMAT. Don't instinctively just jump at the med related question just because you're applying for medicine. I would say be comfortable with answering all the different types of questions. And the reason I say that is because when it comes to the actual exam, you might see the med question and think, oh, I can't really think of any good arguments for this. So that's why you want to be able to answer the other question types as well. That brings me on to a common question, which I get for section three, which is, should I go for the harder questions or should I go for the easier question? And I think a reason why this comes up is because some people think that if I go for the hard option, that I'm going to get a higher mark because I picked something difficult and that my arguments are then more unique than everyone else who just picked the easy question. But that's not the case. The truth is you should go for the question which you think you can give the best arguments for and that you can give the best examples for because that's the, that's the question which you'll give the best response to and you'll get the highest mark for. So that was all the tips I had for each individual section. To wrap up this video, I kind of want to leave it on this point. I know that applying for medical school can be really difficult. And I'm saying that from firsthand experience. I was really stressed out when I was applying as well. So the best advice I can give to you right now is at this stage, do as much research as you can to figure out what's required for you to get in. What are the best ways for you to prepare for the UK CAT, for the BMAT, for the interview. And once you've done that, then rest assured, if you've put your best foot forward, that's all you can do. So that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to see videos dedicated to individual sections with tips for that, then do let me know in the comments down below. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.